everybody, Tracy Brown. I'm going to try this again. I was gonna, doing a, um, a live, basically coaching call for business and practice building and just kind of waiting for a few people to maybe check in when, after I tag them um, if you're interested in getting some free coaching. This is kind of what this call is about. And it's, it's all, totally on me that I didn't send out an email about this or um, like do a big invite. Uh, I know we're all busy, you got things going on, and you're probably actually trying to build your practice <laughs> or see clients, which is great. Uh, but this is what this free um, time is about, is for you to answer some questions. So I'm going to be here for the next few minutes. If no one hops on, I'll just hop off myself. If you're interested in getting your questions answered about whatever kind of business and practice building questions you have I'm happy to do that and to share what I'm seeing works what I'm seeing and eh, don't do that <laughs> or you can but uh, you might be frustrated um, and then honestly if there's any kind of mindset stuff that you've got going on so happy to be here for the next few minutes and I'll let's see here let you all get a chance to hop on and and uh, I'll wait for some live eyeballs here. So if anybody has any questions about their business or their practice, this is the time to ask them now. All right, I'm just gonna do some work over here while I wait for some people to pop on. I'm not gonna talk a lot. I'm gonna save some stuff for the live discussion. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna hang out here a few minutes and make sure that people are interested in hopping on or at least kind of see that like I'm live and, and want to hop on. So just give that a few minutes. But let's see here. Hi, how are you doing? I would love to invite you. Just kind of hanging out for waiting for the people to come. So if you want to wave, you can wave. But I'm here for the next little bit. If you have any, if anybody has any questions about their business, their practice, I'm just gonna, I don't have any specific teaching for right now. I, this is just basically a free Q and A. Um, coaching mindset, ask me questions um, about, you know, business and coaching. Um, um, yeah, practice kind of stuff. So no clinical stuff today, no counseling stuff, just what questions do you have? Or are things hop, hum, hum along, hopping, humming along? You're doing great and you want to share that. You want to share some successes. Let's hear about that too. So I'm here just to provide some support today. And um, so let's do it. If you have any questions and you're here watching, please ask your questions. Don't be shy. Just type them in in the chat here and I will talk them out with you. And that's what I'm here to do. So I'm just going to do some work while I get some questions in. Um, so right now, I'm actually, what I'm working on is the Trauma Integrated Course. Yay! Working on some handouts. Um, like I love putting the information down. I do not like making handouts, so I have help <laughs> for that. But I have to get the got to get the content down for them. So I make a really ugly version of what I am wanting. And I let people, like, I can be really creative and make it pretty, but it takes me a long time and I, I feel like I, to do, I go I'm too slow. So um, I've got some people that make really pretty stuff and um, they help me out a lot. It's worth it. <laughs> and that's part of building your business is to, like, if there's some stuff that you're just getting really bogged down by, you know, if I would do these handouts myself, it would take me weeks. And that's not helping clients get better. I, you know, so it's like... I would love to help you get to the place where you feel like, yeah, I need to get some help. Um, and so this is what this calls for too. Hi, Natalie. I think it's Phi. Um, this is a free business and coaching call, so I don't have any 
thing to tell you. I want to hear from you what your questions are about your business, your practice. Um, this is just like I said, give me your questions and I'm going to answer them here live about anything you want to talk about. Mindset, your practice building, your business building, local marketing, online marketing. Um, if you need help, how do you get help? What kind of help do you need? That's something really important to think about if you're ready um, to get a, like a, like I say, a VA to help you do some stuff, take some task off your back so you can see more clients or be do some creative stuff or whatever. Um, we can talk about how to do that. I've had three V. One, two, three. I've had three VAs. The first two didn't work out. I have a fan freaking tastic one now. Um, and she's kind of turned into my like basically kind of online business manager of like Tracy get some stuff done, <laughs> um, uh, which has been awesome. Um, be happy to talk to you about the evolution of that if you're interested in hearing about that. Um, it's not really about me today. It's really about like what you guys need. Um, I just want to provide some free support here. So I've got a couple of people watching. I'd love for a wave, a hi that you're here. Um, if you don't have any questions, that's fine. I can hop off, but I'm just here to answer any questions you have that like you've been stuck on, dying to know about, you know, anything. So I'm just waiting for some info to scroll through. If you have a question about anything, you can ask me about my practice. You can ask me about, um, gosh, I've been doing this 13 years. Just so if you want to know some background, um, I've worked under another dietitian for like nine years. Um, and then I've been on my own. This is the fifth year, I guess. Um, yeah. I'm on my fifth year and um, I work for a therapist as well in her practice and they did things really differently which was really good for me to see like some pros and cons of doing business in different ways um, so yeah I was like an associate and another di a dietitian kind of like the dietitian for a therapist in her practice um, and at the same time like little teeny tiny bits on the side I was working on my own stuff little bits over those years but really slow. I didn't have the confidence um, to just jump and dive before. So I stayed longer in those positions than I really should have. You know, both, all both of those situations kind of wore out their, their welcomes. Um, but that's okay. We learn. But anyway, um, so like I said, I've seen a lot and learned a lot. And if there's anything and done a lot, tons of coaching, business coaching, mindset coaching, lots of therapy, lots of kinds of stuff to like put all this some stuff together that's worked for me so I'd love to hear about where you all are and what's worked for you so if you don't want to put it here live in the chat you can you can message me that's fine I don't mind um, but again this isn't really like a, a time for me to talk about like here's a topic this is what I want you to do or here's my suggestion it's like I want to hear from you all like what you're doing and where you're located and all that jazz so I can support you all in growing as well so let me know if you have any um, things you want to talk about. Hey Kate, good to see you. So this is a time to ask some questions if you're on live and if you have any business questions, practice building. I was telling um, the folks on here already, I'm not talking about me and what my suggestions are for any kind of thing today. It's more about I'm here to just freely and fully support you and what you need to build your practice and your business. Thanks, yeah, any questions you have? I'm over here kind of like just doing some stuff and I thought, hey, um, well I planned this this morning, like hey, I'm gonna be live today, answer some business and co uh, practice stuff. So if you um, have questions, please put them in the chat now. I would love um, to answer those for you, okay? So if you wanna go back to the beginning, I talked a little bit. Oh my gosh, so new new September, tell us about that. Is that a bigger space, more economical space? And here's your question, I wanna hear about it. Shoot, that's awesome. So I'm gonna wait for you, Kate, to get your question in. I'm so pumped that you have a question that we need to hear about. So like I said, I was saying earlier that I'm working on some handouts. Okay, yeah, good. What? Tell us what year you're in and uh, all that jazz. Should I do it in person on one? Oh my gosh, well, I've never, I haven't done the SE. I know 
um, the people I know who've done the SE training really just crank it out because I think it's such a um, you know from my experience of working really closely with people who are doing the SE training is that they kind of just did one you know I know that each each year so that, you know if, if those of you don't know this is somatic experiencing um, and trying to think about how to sort of niche into some combo IE well that's what I do um, um, so uh, oh okay so I'm trying to you're the second year okay got it okay so you're cranking through all three years which is awesome you know when I did I'll just share with you what I did um, I have just layered on the nuances of what I've learned are different so I've learned a lot from SE I've learned a lot from um, you know in my somatic course I'm gonna talk about the different people I've learned from so the first year I you know I've been doing in, um, intuitive eating I guess coaching or attuned eating coaching and eating disorder nutrition therapy for um, probably it definitely was uh, about eight years before I discovered that I needed to go we I, I think we're gonna to have to as um, intuitive eating and eating to a professional to put more trauma integration into our work just because a huge percent of people have um, um, attachment based issues and and all kinds of like even hidden kind of silent traumas that like interfere with their ability to be um, um, I'm gonna tell the whole story um, here, Kate. So hang tight with me. How I got there, and I'm going to talk into this last question. So, um, you know, I I just basically I mean we're going to need to know this stuff. Is I layered things. So the first step I learned how to do really with um, the in, the in the trenches of the English order work as an intuitive eating practitioner and non diet practitioner is just starting to see like I was seeing there were barriers of like taking the information and integrating that, and they were people these weren't the people that like can like look read the book and you talk to them about intuitive eating and know their body signals they couldn't really be in their body for very long so it wouldn't stick and so I just started working on like can people get can safely can they get grounded or can we feel a little bit of feelings so that's called like I mean I know there's difference like pendulation basically is can I feel a little bit of something and be out and I would do some of that in the session along with the food work so I just started doing that first and then a different way to language that that's se language a different person I, I learned from his name was Raphael Kushner and this is just an independent guy who is just very very good at somatic coaching so he's not a therapist um, but he's freaking brilliant and he's not trained in like um, specific like um, psychological processes but I think he's been trained by a lot of really brilliant people but he just anyway I just learned this really too simple process for, for him. It was like, what is happening? So in the body, like, like, what is this? I would ask two questions. What is this? And can, be, we, can we be with it? So I would do that in session with the intuitive eating work. And then over the years, I've added in, like, I, I was trained in some Akomi, um, which is really like um, a starter of um, sensory process sensory motor psychotherapy and so I learned how to contact which is like just repeating <laughs> some stuff or sometimes somebody would say you know, they would be exhibiting what looked like sadness I would say sad huh and that would either land or it wouldn't and, um, and so I'm, I'm rambling a little bit Kate just to answer your questions like I guess your question is how do I do you know, I guess my question, my own intuitive journey and how to write my works of an intuitive person. Well, you know, it sounds like you're coming from the SE language first and you're coming, you know, you're still working on your intuitive eating journey. I would say that keep working on your own intuitive eating stuff. You don't have to be perfect. No, I bet nobody here um, is, is a perfect quote unquote eater. We're all and our bodies are always adjusting. Like as you age, things change your time of the month <laughs> with like what your body's needs are if you're sick. You know, thing you're always learning, we're always adjusting. I think important for you is to, to keep getting confident with your own ability to honor your own signals of hunger and fullness, knowing what your hunger and fullness is, knowing what you need, knowing how to reach for it, to yield to it. Um, 
and I don't think you need to be perfect to get started. I just don't. So I don't know if that helps you or not. Or you can ask me more specific questions like, you don't need to be perfect with the intuitive eating. I think as if you're doing it more from the therapy realm is really looking at how you want to do it. So dietitians, um, you know, as dietitians, I'm diving really, really deep into the food. As a therapist, you might be doing more of the SE stuff and recognizing maybe where their limitations are with intuitive eating. And um, depending how deep you want to go with all that, it is really up to you. But I just know as a, as a dietitian, like in a session, I sincerely can't do, um, you, you can weave back and forth doing like just food work with some of um, somatic work. Um, but you often can't do a full on completing something. You can't really always do both. So I have to go back and forth, but recognizing I am trying to also meet the needs of where the client is um, and what their most needs are. So like today, for example, I'll give you a quick um, example. My client came in and she had like a whole week of food journals to go through the hunger and fullness. So I really didn't do a lot of grounding or um, contacting or um, I wasn't doing any attachment work really that session in terms of it, specifically aside from just helping her make sure she was present with me and she knew I was here with her and she could feel that in her body. But I wasn't doing a lot of like, um, you know, where the barriers to action and how that's related to like the eating disorder behavior. I wasn't doing a lot of that. We were just really doing a lot of hunger fullness work and seeing where the barrier was, um, you know, what emotion was feeling like so much that she couldn't get her breakfast in, you know, and then she's going to take that work to the therapist and we were working on, okay, so that's there. And can we hold space that like what's happening, you know, what is this and, and can I be with it? We did a lot of that today around like she could recognize what her hungerfulness was, but couldn't respond to it because of all the other sensory stuff and the emotion stuff. So we just kind of opened all that up and identified it and then kind of identified what would she need to more honor her hunger there. And so we, so we did some interventions with that. So I know this is not business coaching stuff. We're off. I know we're off track here, but that's okay. I want to answer Kate's question because we're live. And I'll read your question, Kate. As I suppose my fear is getting people is getting people in active eating disorders and a screen for that. Like somebody needs a whole team of actually Ed, right? Well, guess what? <laughs> you are gonna get a lot of people. Um, you're going to get a lot of people who um, do have active eating disorders who just come for you because they think they want to do some intuitive eating work. You're just going to. And that's okay. Um, and somebody needs a whole team for active eat. Yeah, I just, I think that they, we do it because they need it and because we need it. The team is really important. So, you know, go ahead and get your team together. So you know that I do uh, virtual work and I work a lot with um, online with SEs and all that kind of stuff. If that's something you're looking for or we can all work together to find somebody local if they just don't want to do that kind of stuff. And yes, do you think the IE certification is helpful for marketing? Sure. I mean, I don't have it. Um, that hasn't held me back from getting a lot of people who want to work on a two needing um, um, work so you don't have to have it I think it's just one of those things that um, it, it's a marketing tool for sure do you need it to be a really excellent intuitive eating practitioner no not at all um, it, it's just a marketing tool but I don't have it so I don't market that I have it it's just more about but you know I I'm really I've gotten pretty clear about like kind of how I help people and what problems I can solve. So I, I mean, I just don't have that tool to use, even though I you know I talk about the principles in some way, shape, or form. But in my own language, I've been doing that because um, I've been doing this a long time before all that was available. <laughs> if that makes sense. So the book was there, but it was like an adjunct tool in the work. Now that it's like the tool that a lot of people use as their entire practice, that's not a problem. But you don't have to have it. But if it, I think certifications really are about like if it helps you build your confidence to get yourself out there and do what you got to do what you know how to do then it's it's worth the money for sure if you if a if something helps you like okay I got this and you're blasting out that's awesome then then do it okay can you piecemeal team virtually yeah that's kind of what my whole practice is is I kind of look at creating a um, 
a team a good treatment center without walls was essentially what a lot of what I do um, I do obviously work um, locally so I have like an actual here's a doctor here's a therapist here's me and this is local but I see a lot of people in my area because they live an hour away so they might have local people as well um, but I see tons of people all over the Florida um, you know I don't see medically compromised people all over the world but um, you know they they probably <laughs> you have um, more than just like, oh, you know, I've kind of been dieting and, you know, I just need to fix that in two sessions, we're done. Um, but anyway, going back to your confidence piece, like, yeah, we could all use more confidence, right? It's more about like, let's unpack a little bit more. Do you have body work as a part of the team too? Does that feel too woo-woo? Like, no. Um, I think body work, I think really, really good body work people are a great part of the team. Um, I, I um, if you, any of you, if you might be familiar with, um, Kathy Kane and Steve Terrell, um, they, if you are trained in their work, their body work, um, and you also have like a really strong therapy background, I think you do excellent work with people. Um, uh, craniosacral is great, great for, um, you know, birth trauma for sure. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I think that's a great piece to have. Um, I, you know, I caution, um, depending on, again, this is not me for me to upset, uh, um, assess because I'm a dietitian, but you have to know your clients really well too, like how much they can, they can handle just because I see a lot of people kind of do some energy work kind of things and it blows, you know, acupuncture. I've got a person who like do acupuncture and she was out for two days, like not dissociated, but really could barely, she had terrible, um, um, just body pain and fatigue from uh, an acupuncture session. So it's really important that your clients are kind of going, you're working with that, that therapist to be able to know like, Hey, what's this client's capacity? Um, I'm pretty good at tracking capacity, but I always defer the therapist as well. So, um, that's the thing. Do you, do you, oh, okay. Got it. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. My clients don't really come to me for SE. Um, well, um, I, you know, yeah, cl clients, got real, our clients even know what intuitive eating training means. So it's like, it's important that you don't get, we don't get all bogged down with like the, these names of stuff. You really want to speak to what people are struggling with. And this is for everybody here, no matter what you're doing is like speak to the struggle, speak to hope, speak to, um, how you feel what's maybe missing what they've already tried um let's see oh okay so i'm looking back at your questions kate like do, what's the thing what do i do do i do scandalonies training do i do an arm kathy kane yeah right everything <laughs> let's take a step back i want you to slow down okay right um oh well yeah of course I think, Kate, maybe slow down a second and think about who you want to help and know that, of course, people want to, um, you know what? It's funny. I, I would be honest with you. I don't have a lot of people coming to me directly. Hey, help me lose weight. Those are the clients that I might get through a health prof um, listing who don't even read what I do. They just say, oh, dietitian. Okay, great. The other 99% of people come to me knowing that like, I'm probably not going to help them lose weight, but they need help because they want to heal their relationship with food. Um, they might want to lose weight, but they know that like, that's, they, they can already tell they're going to have to put that on the back burner in some way. Or again, they have really, they have an eating disorder and they're scared that we gain weight, but they're all the, the, um, the feet, the, the overall, the out of control that the life feels like that's like per, the predominant thing. Um, so it's not that they um, don't maybe want to lose weight, but they also want to have more peace. And so that's what you need to speak to. And then all these modalities help you support that, you know. So anybody else have any questions about business or practice building, please let me know. We are doing, like, um, all kinds of stuff here in this free Q&A right now. So, Kate, I want you to think about, like, who you want to work with. And how your unique experiences and skills 
you know, you bring all that to the table, but you're not going to want to speak in practitioner tech language. You know, you're going to really want to speak to like how these things support their becoming, they're coming home to their bodies, their peace with food and weight, um, feeling like stress, whatever. So take a second to think about that. All those trainings you mentioned, they're all good. Um, there's not a bad one. They're all going to support what you want to do. Um, but yeah, you still got to answer the fundamental question. Like people are going to come to you wanting to lose weight and they're going to be disappointed. Well, if you are putting your unique way of helping people out there in a, in a way that like speaks to like, what do they really want? People say they want to lose weight, but what do they really want? And then you, you can use your skills and your tools to help them with that. Yeah. You, you don't really need to talk about that. You're SE, you're an SCP and you can help them like regulate their nervous system and do intuitive eating. Uh, you might find in those sessions you can't do both and that's why you want to team anyway. Like I do a lot of coaching work, as you know, like all over the place, but I still try to find people therapists because people are just going to be, like I have coaching clients in different places. They don't have an eating disorder. I still want them to have a therapist, you know, so that's just something. And it helps um, people just more efficiently get their life more... Um, grounded, balanced, intact, and we're not trying to do, be too many things and do too much and get overwhelmed too, trying to like manage all that. So, and people don't need all that, but by the way, you can sometimes do what people need in one go, but most people are going to need some more help. So love to hear back from you, Kate. Any thoughts as you're ruminating? Does anybody else have any questions? I want to thank Sydney for hopping on and, um, any, let's see who else we got here that's still on. Alora, thank you all for coming and listening. Kate, Natalie, Fi, or Fee, if you're still all here, please say hi. You can wave to me. Thumbs up. Just let me know you're here if you have any questions um, about business building, practice building, anything you have questions about. If you missed some stuff, oh no, that's that's fine. No, I can't. I have to scroll up and down to to see people, so don't worry about it, Kate. You're not hogging the space. Everybody's um, either just kind of either watching, they might be watching in the background or on the side, maybe just lurking to see what else happens, but I'm glad that you're asking questions because it's going to make other people think about where they're at, what they want as well. So um, any of the questions, Kate, because you're here asking questions and if anybody else has them, nah, no, no, everybody, there's other people live. Um, I don't know how live works. I just hop on and start talking or, you know, this is like a live supportive free business coaching call um but yeah you're the only one asking questions so you're actually kate getting a one-on-one which is awesome and, and you're asking really great questions do you have any other thoughts because basically when people ask me questions it just kind of the, the things move up so if, if i answer a question it keeps moving up so i see what's the most recent thing um but anybody else is welcome yeah so ask questions um let's give it another five minutes um do you have any other thoughts? I'd love to like keep getting helping you get some clarity here. This would be good. Um, how close are you to actually opening your practice, Kate? Or are you already doing that? You said you're moving offices. So are you seeing clients actively? Or what's happening for you? Nope. Well, the, well, the first one is I have the question. But yeah, let's swing into some marketing. Tell me what your question is. Go for it. So I'll wait for you to kind of, you know, I'm I'm not here giving information today. I'm here just giving support. So whatever your question is, I'll answer that. Okay, cool. So you're moving to office full time. That's exciting. That's really exciting. Cool. Congratulations. And so tell me what your um, burning question is about having a full-time practice um, about business or marketing or whatever. What are you doing so far that's brought you in clients? Um, what are you curious about? Of course, oh, we all have peeing our pants fear about doing our own practice. For sure, building a practice. Ah, okay. Okay, good. Good. Um, if you're not, if you're on psychology today, awesome. Make sure that you maximize your zip codes in your area. So that what that means is um, 
in the surrounding areas, make sure that you've, um, okay, so you get referrals from other people, got it. So in your area, Kate, are you, okay, other therapists, good. Um, reach out to dietitians, for sure. Reach out to occupational therapist. They have, they often see eating things or they don't know they're seeing anything, so you wanna do, I'm, I'm definitely a way, um, let's meet for coffee and or lunch kind of, or dinner kind of girl, and getting in there and building a relationship because, and maintaining those relationships. And that's really helpful. I have, um, in my local area, I'm really tight with one, two, three, four. Um, I'm really tight with four different therapists um, who work with eating issues. And um, I'm not the only dietitian they refer to, but I'm one of, I think, one or two, maybe two others they have, which is awesome. And uh, yeah, so build relationship. It's not just like do emails and calls and stuff. We try to get together. Um, it bring it, you, know, you start to create a little community. We're a question, but do you have to pay for your coffee? I do. I always offer, and oftentimes what happens when you build a relationship is that I, if I invite, I always offer. That's just me. I like to I like paying for people's coffee and, and meals. It's fun. Um, but usually, what ends up happening, we either pay separately or we take turns. Like I went to lunch with a friend, a therapist colleague friend that we've been working together now either two or three years, and. Um, I pay. She's like, yeah, don't do that. I'm like, yeah, you just get me next time. And if she forgets, I don't care. Um, but yeah, have fun. Um, yeah, so find out where they're at, what, what's convenient for them. Or sometimes I work with my schedule too, like, you know, what's a midway point between where I think their office might be and where I am and say, hey, I'm out of this place. Or what do you like? Um, I have fun with it. So yeah, offer to pay. <laughs> it's fun. Um, Let's see what else. And not, I mean, and also remember that not, it's like dating kind of, so not all meetings are gonna go awesome. Sometimes it's gonna be awkward and you guys are on the same page, no big deal. Um, I've done a lot of coffee dates where it's like I've never talked to them again because they're just, they're not quite in my niche, but they kind of know about me, which is good. So every once in a while you hear from them. Okay, so let's see, I see a, I see a hey, dietitian, I'd love to run a group with her eventually, but I don't know if dietitians have a dual relationship issue. Yeah, it's sort of a back of my head, but you know what? I just think that you do where you work with her, and um, you you guys need to have a conversation about that. I mean, I would wait, you know, a little bit, you know, give it some time. Um, like I have a person that um, I'm kind of friendly with now as a client, but we really just took like it was like two years before I spoke to her, and we're not close, but I, you know, we have this other common interest that we sometimes chat about. But it's it. I mean, it doesn't happen a lot. And I do. I had to have a, a, a relationship with a therapist. Um, kind of similar issue. We're doing some joint stuff now. But like you know, we took some space to make sure that like, you know whatever. Um, and things are good now. We're in the same place with this similar you know thing, equal playing field kind of thing, and it's worked out beautifully. But um, a lot of times those things they don't you know as you know it's, it's tricky. But um, you know, time will work that out, I think. So um, that's the way I feel about it. But um, yeah, so tell me more about, you know, your fear about marketing. So you're doing um, the health pro uh, therapy thing. Make sure it's maxed out. Make sure, um, I think those therapy thing profiles are really good and helpful. If you really don't try, I, I'll be honest, like either dietitians or therapists, if you're trying to do like 10 different things, I'm like, I'm usually moving on. But you, I think that people, Therapists, I think you gotta, you're got you probably a little more broader health every size and non dietitians. You need to get like, you know, three or four things are your thing because if you look like you try to do everything, and that's been my experience when I've worked with, um, when I've seen other dietitians, um, like I see eating disorders and weight loss and first I'm like, ew, yuck, you don't know. Um, and I do 10 different other MNT things, I'm like, nah. Um, but if it's like eating disorders and stress management and gut health, like, yeah, okay, got it. Trying to keep it a little bit more broad, but you, you've got your niche going. Um, yeah, so I hate, yeah, so go look at mine. I have a health prof, and you know, it's different. So healthprofs.com. Um, go look at mine. Um, and just look how like I've got it really narrowed down and you're just gonna be broader and you're gonna put like your different treatment modalities 
Um, yeah, so put down who you like to work with, what ages. Because um, if you don't really want to work with kids, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. Because um, you'll get them. Um, especially if you're working with eating disorders. So if you're going to work with eating disorders. Um, yeah, so he- if you mean health profs, yeah. So that's where my stuff is. Um, and when I get calls... I would say 80% of the calls I get aren't junk, are junk calls. Yeah, so go look on there. That would be good. And Mark, I mean, put down who you, who you are and what you want to do and what you want to work with. Um, then don't write, you see couples. So I, I see a lot of people do it out of desperation to get clients. Don't do that. Don't, because you'll get that and then you'll be unhappy. So don't do it. Um, let's see, what else we got on here? Do I use business cards and pamphlets? I have business cards. I keep them in my car. Um, so I've used them. You know, when I've traveled, I've given them to people. Um, I mail them out. Like I have um, a really, really robust like um, therapy practice I work with. It's a town several hours away here in Florida. Um, and they use my card, which is awesome. So I keep a big, you know, like, what is it, that Vista print? I got my 500 in my trunk. It's literally in my, I think, my glove compartment. And then I have a big tray here in my car or my house. And every once in a while people email me, hey, can you mail me some? You know, wherever they're located here or somewhere else. And I just chuck them out. But that's just what I do. Um, I don't have pamphlets because, you know, I think of, you know, think about like where you spend your money. Is it, you know, where I'd rather chunk out some, you know, my health profs and that's been getting a return in a month or even a Facebook ad, you know? For the cost of like a hundred dollars of pamphlets, like you could do a hundred dollars in Facebook ads and and even do local ads there, and that would work way better. So I'm um, just thinking about that. Oh yeah, you gotta do that, but you know, good business cards are cheap, which is good. So, do you have any other questions? I'm gonna sign off here because I'm starting to lose my voice. I'm getting thirsty and hungry, um, um, and I got a few emails here to go back. But is there any other questions anybody has? And I'm so grateful for all y'all that have shown up live here. This has been really super fun. Uh, I also have been paying for a web service. I did my website and think about it. Okay. So you have Squarespace? Like you're done. Like you have a website and it's done. Is that what you're saying? So it's, yeah, I mean, I made homemade websites. This is my third website I have currently have. Um, and I didn't actually... Um, by the way, I did not focus on a pretty new website. This is the first like pretty nice website to have um and my first one was homemade um oh so for 55 dollars a month are they maintaining it for you oh what are you getting for your 55 dollars a month i'm not saying that's too much you just need to know what you're getting for that you know are you getting just maintenance are you getting seo like what are you getting that's helping you make that website get people oh yeah yeah nothing yeah then don't I mean, you have to pay for your hosting, which was whatever that is per year or per month. But I would say if, um, yeah, I would make your own, like, you know, the website, you know, it's just another um, place where you can, like, it's your storefront, essentially. And you don't need a big fancy one, not until later, I think, that helps you, um, maintain a big robust another stuff totally for another day yeah I'm gonna do um, I did a really cool so if you want SEO stuff I um, you know Erica Jewelson she's a dietitian but if you're interested in somebody who does just is really good at that go check out her stuff unconventional RD I think dot com but I did an interview with her this month that I'm going to be using in my um, well I haven't announced this but this winter in December, I'm going to be opening up a a monthly um, uh, um, counseling skills and sup- and business supervision like group, you know. So really, kind of like for people to like maximize their their budgets wisely for things, and for people who don't, you know, really have access to a lot of like one on one and going supervision. That's what that's going to be for. And we're going to have. Um, um, we're gonna go back and forth with like counseling skills and business building, um, cause that seems to be what I'm, you know, t- I'm good at supervision, I'm good at business, business stuff, so it's like I might as well put all that together for people. Um, so we're gonna do that later this, like late, two th- late this year, early, 
um, 2020. Oh, Nina, thank you for watching. I'm gonna hop off, watch the whole thing, please. I'm so sorry you missed it. Um, but I'm losing my voice, that's why I'm hopping off. But um, anyway, I have a um, SEO interview I did with um, Erica Jolson that will I'll be putting out later this winter, early next year. Um, thank you, appreciate that, and congrats on your stuff too. You're cranking along. So um, what I would love you to do is really take get a note get a, get a notebook your business practice building notebook and start to write down who you want to be with, who you want to see, how you're helping people, um, how you would help people. And then, you know, start tracking um, your efforts and what's what's fruitful and then leave the rest. That's just a really, really, really basic thing about businesses. Like we keep ourselves really busy, but really busy doesn't um, always um, lead to clients that we can really serve you know so Jenny thanks for coming live oh sorry had a call thanks for coming live y'all and please go back to the beginning if you're just joining I've been talking for about 35 minutes so there's a lot to listen to but thank you all for coming I want to do this at least once a month where I just hop on a QA and a time and next time I'll do a much better job at announcing it but again sometimes I'm pretty spontaneous that way so anyway thank you all love you have a great evening, morning, wherever you're located, and I'll talk to y'all real soon. Bye.